Hello everyone, today I will show you how to run a two sample t-test. As always, I will show you how to do it based on a real life example. So, <clears throat> this is a corn bunting. Uh, corn bunting is a small bird, a European bird. Uh, and we've captured a lot of different corn buntings over the past year. So we trapped them uh, using mist nets. And each time that we caught a corn bunting, we would measure the total length of the bunting. So the length uh, starting from the tip of the beak until the end of the tail. So also, besides the length, we also recorded whether it was a female or a male. And our idea is that the males are a bit larger than the females, so that their length is longer, but we don't really know whether or not this is the case. So that's why we use statistics to find out uh, if the males are actually bigger than the females. So let's look at the data set that we collected uh, over the past year. So <clears throat> let me attach the data. Let's take a look at it. So this is the data. So we have three columns. So the first, the first column is the ID of the of the individual bird. So it starts at one and it ends at seventy. So in total, we caught uh, seventy different birds. And then the second column is. Um, the sex of the bird. So whether it's a male, so in this case an M, or a female, an F. And then the last column uh, is the length of the bird. So the length starting from the tip of the beak until the end of the tail, as I said before. So these are all separate individuals. Uh, we made sure that we did not um, recapture the same individual. So if we did, we, we always marked it. So if we recaptured it, then we released it. We did not measure it again because we wanted to have independent samples, of course, otherwise uh, it's not it's not a good study otherwise if you, if you don't have independent samples. So <clears throat> first of all, the first thing you should always do um, if you're going to analyze your data is to explore your data. So the first thing I always do is I, I make a box plot. So the command is quite simple. So you just type box plot, uh, and then between brackets you put length versus sex. So let's let's run this and see what happens. Um, so on the in the right you get you get the box plots of the lengths of the females and the males. So the F stands for female, the M stands for male. So if you look at the lengths, then it seems that the females are a bit smaller than the males, but there's a lot of overlap in the distribution of both males and females. So we don't know for sure whether it's a statistically significant difference. So that's why we use um, statistics to figure out whether or not it's it's significant. So in this case, we want to run a two sample t-test as I said. So for a two sample t-test, three assumptions have to be met. And the first assumption is that all samples are independent. In this case, that means that each individual that we measured is a different individual. You should not measure the same individual because it's the same sample, of course, it's not independent. So, But in this case, we marked the birds, as I said, so we know for sure that all of our birds are different birds, they're independent of each other, so the first assumption has been met. This assumption of, of independence, um, it's something that you you just know as a researcher. It's not something you can test in R. There's no test for it. It's something, it's really based on your research. So if you do good research, your samples are independent. Um, the second assumption is one that you can test. So this is the assumption that um, all of your samples are drawn from populations that have equal variances. If you don't have equal variances, you cannot run a two sample t-test. So let's take a look at the box plot. So if you look at the box plots, Based on these these distributions, you could you can assume that the um, the variances of both the females and the males are similar, but we don't know for sure just looking at the box plot. So we have to test it, and a very simple test is the variance test. So you type var dot test, and then between brackets length versus sex, you run it. And what's important here is only the p value, and if this p value is larger. Then 0.05, then we um, cannot reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that the variances of both populations, so both males and females, that the variances are are the same. That's the null hypothesis. We cannot reject this null hypothesis, as I said. So we can assume that we're dealing with equal variances. So this assumption has been met. Then the third assumption. 
uh, before we run the t-test is, and this is a very important assumption, is that all samples are drawn from populations that follow a normal distribution. Um, and this is often where it goes wrong because what people sometimes do um, is they would look for a normal distribution of the complete data set, so the full data set. So combining both the male data and the female data. Of course, this is wrong. You cannot do this. You have to test uh, the normality distribution of females and males, in this case, separately. So to do that, uh, I just subset the data. So I make a new data frame. The first one is the data frame called males. I subset the data. So I just type data and I and I type sex equals uh, M, in this case, male. So I run it. And then at the right, you see that we created a new data frame. If we click on it, we look at it, we see that only the M is left. So only the males have been selected and these are the lengths of the males. Now we can do the same for the females. So let's just uh, run the same script to get to, to, um, to subset the female data. So at the right, we get the female data frame and then you see only the females are left. So we, we want to test for um, normality of the distribution of both the males and the females separately. And there's two ways in which you can do it. And the first way is the Shapiro-Wilk test or Shapiro test. Um, I can already say that you should not use this test. You should not do it. Uh, this test is not robust. It's, um, it's, it's not very trustworthy um, in the sense that if you have a very small uh, sample size, for example, less than 15 or 10 samples, then it's not very, you cannot trust this test. Also, if your sample size is very large, so a couple of hundreds of samples, it's the same problem. Um, so usually you only use a Shapiro test if your sample size is intermediate. So somewhere in between 20 to 80, more or less, uh, individual samples. And then you can run the test. Otherwise, there's different uh, options that you should look at. So just let's just run the test because we have 35 males, 35 females, which is an intermediate sample size. So let's run the test. Now, what we see is for the males is that the p-value of the Shapiro-Wilk normality test is larger than 0.05. In this case, that means that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is that um, samples are drawn from a population with a normal distribution. In other words, it's normally distributed data. If you do the same for the females, so we, we select the female data set and then the length of the females. We run the test. And then again, we get a p-value larger than 0.05. Again, indicating that we cannot reject the null hypothesis, indicating that also the female lengths follow a normal distribution. So this is the, the output of the Shapiro test. So based on this output, you know, we can... Uh, we can assume that we that it's okay to use or to run the two sample t-test. But as I said, Shapiro test is not uh, the best option. So what we normally do uh, to check for normality is we we plot a normal quanti quantile plot. So in R, that's the code QQ norm. And then we just select the male data set in this case and the lengths. And we can also draw uh, a line. So if we do that, what we see is um, we see the straight line, first of all, and then we see all of the, the dots. And what's important is that all of your dots are on a straight line, so that there, that there's not too many outliers. Uh, you shouldn't have major fluctuations uh, in this plot, so it should be a straight line. Now, in this case, it's quite safe to uh, conclude that it's a straight line. So this indicates that uh, the male lengths follow a normal distribution. Now, if we make the same plot for the females, the female corn buntings, then again, we see that all of the dots are more or less on a straight line. There's no major outliers, no major fluctuations, no weird patterns. So again, uh, it's safe to assume that also the female lengths follow a normal distribution. So if all of these three assumptions have been met, then uh, finally, this is the time that we can run the independent samples t-test uh, or the student's t-test. So again, very simple code. We just type t.test, open brackets, length versus sex. We run it and uh, you get the output. So first of all, we look at the p-value. It's much smaller than 0.05. So in this case, that means that we, we reject the null hypothesis uh, in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis 
is that the means of the female lengths and the male lengths are equal. That's a null hypothesis, but we reject it. So in other words, males have a different size than females. And if we look at the means, the means for the females, that's this one, eh, group F, meals, means of the females, uh, it's 17.7 centimeters on average. Now if we look at the means of the males, the length is about 18 and a half. So the males are significantly larger and longer than the females. If you uh, write the paper, if you want to publish your results, uh, then it's important to always mention the test statistic. In this case, it's the T. T equals minus 3.6. So you report the T value. Also always report the degrees of freedom. In this case, it's 68. And last but not least, of course, your p-value, which indicates whether or not you, you cross the 0.05 threshold uh, for significance. Um, that's about it for the t-test. Now, finally, it's important to, to, as I said, to know that all of your assumptions have to be met. Now, if your first assumption hasn't been met, then that means that your research was bad. So you have to do your research all over again because you should always have independent samples of course, there are, uh, sometimes it's okay that your samples are not independent. For example, if you do paired tests, which is something I'll come back to in, a, in, another, um, in another example, um, another tutorial. But then the second assumption, assumption and the third assumption, um, sometimes there's tricks to, to, to get these assumptions right. And one of the tricks is to transform your data so you can uh, for example, you can uh, do a logarith logarithmic transformation on your continuous variable. So in this case, length of the birds. Uh, and sometimes those transformations, uh, if you do them, you, these assumptions are met. Um, if the third assumption is not met, then you have different alternatives. So first you try to transform your data. If transformation doesn't work, then you could try to go for a non-parametric uh, test. In this case, that would be a man with new test. It would be the best option. That's a non-parametric alternative for um, the two sample t-test. So that's it for now. Um, if you like this video, please check uh, my other videos.